All right, so chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, it said all scripture, all right, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh, all right? Now, when Shaul was talking to Timothy, okay, when Paul was talking to Timothy, all right, he wasn't talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all right, and the New Testament, all right? All scripture, what he was actually talking about was the Torah and the writings or the words of the prophets, did not he? All right, he said, all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is what? And is profitable for doctrine. All right, not doctrine of men, but doctrine, all right, doctrine of Yahweh. There's a difference. We know that there's a doctrine of men, there's a doctrine of Yahweh. The doctrine right here, scripture is the doctrine of Yahweh, all right? For reproof, all right, for reproof. This is in the second writings, because I'm going somewhere with this. For reproof, for correction, for reproof, for correction. We're living in a day and age where nobody likes to be corrected in the body, all right? You know what? People in the world receive and take more correction than the body, than the, than the body of Yahweh, all right? The people in the body of Yahweh we are in a generation, all right, in the church, in the Hebrew community, in, in biblical research, we are in a place where nobody is accountable to nobody. And nobody can correct nobody's error. But listen to scripture. It said all scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine. For what? For reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in what? Husband talks about righteousness and unrighteousness. All right? Righteousness, that's what the scripture is for. For what? Let's go back over it. It says, it's given for inspiration of Yahweh, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, all right? All right, for reproof, to go back, to study it, to proofread, all right? To correct errors in understanding and knowledge, all right? For correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of Yah, now this man we know is not the male gender. When we talk about man right here, we're talking about creation, male and female, all right? That the man or woman and woman of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, I, I, I want to, I'm going to go down a little bit, chapter 4. This is like so good, all right? It says, For I charge thee therefore before Yahweh and the Mashiach Yahshua, all right, who shall what? Judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Listen to this. A lot of people say, oh, they be preaching. But here, listen, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. This is like, no matter if people want to hear it or not, be instant in what I read in 16. Be instant in the scripture for what? Reproof, correction, instruction, in righteousness. Preach that no matter what. Whether, whatever society is doing, wherever the church is, whatever the Hebrew 
your community is doing, whatever anybody is doing in the world, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort a balance. You know you have people, all they do is rebuke, 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 rebuke. I can't even say that a whole lot of time. Rebuke, 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 rebuke. All right. They don't know how to rebuke and exhort. All right. It says to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. We rebuke with short suffering. If you're going to rebuke somebody, guess what? You got to wait it out with them. You got to see the end of the matter. You got to see, if you're going to take upon yourself to rebuke, all right, in scripture, individuals, correct, all right, you're going to have to do that with long, so you're going to have to put the time in and the work in, all right? You're going to have to put yourself to that time. Listen, don't be rebuking, 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 rebuking if you're not going to be long suffering. All right? And if you're not going to exhort, if you're not going to bring balance, all right? It says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, teachers having itching ears. And they should turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That's why I don't get caught up in trends and cliches and what's popular on any side, on Christi in Christianity, in the church, or in the Hebrew community. I don't get caught up. And don't get caught up in that. Listen, it says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. When it say make full proof of thy ministry, what clicked with me within this era is that keep, listen, because we got to understand what we talked about, being instant in season, preaching and teaching, be consistent, all right? Make full proof of your ministry. Not only be, be diligent and consistent, but make full proof. That means to study everything. Make full proof of what you're doing. Make sure you cross all your T's and dot your I's before you present anything to anybody. Every now and then, you should be able to pat yourself on the back. Not to give yourself vain glory or self glory. But here's one thing I told my husband the other day. I told him, I said, one thing for sure that I got a good track record of is nobody has ever came back and corrected my teaching. That's meaning when I taught anything, I make sure I taught what I know and I make sure I stay in my lane. I don't teach, I don't try to do anything else. Other people do great and good work. And the way they present it, yes, yeah, it's like, man, man, they expounded on that. Like, awesome. But if that's not my area of expertise, I won't teach on it because then I get out of my lane and guess what? You'll begin to see my error and you'll begin correct. Here, here's the only, in all my years of ministry, all my years of ministry, the only thing that has ever came up, when the only thing that has ever came up to me, anybody approached me, not correcting my sermons, my teachings, my preachings, but they always say, Oh, a woman shouldn't teach. That's the only thing I've ever gotten. That's the only, that's the only offense that someone has attacked with me. When people listen to me, they don't say, you're wrong in what you're teaching.
teaching, you should not be teaching. They don't say that. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about, but a woman should a woman shouldn't be pastoring. A woman shouldn't be teaching. The only thing they say in the Hebrew community, where's your head wrap? Now they never said anything against what I'm teaching. I make foolproof of my ministry. The way you attack me, you are attacking outer, their outer offenses. That when I stand before the Father, the Father is not, I'm not going to not make it in because I didn't have a head covering on. Or because I, I'm a woman preacher. Believe me, I, will, I am not going to bust hell wide open because my head is not wrapped up. Guess what? Because no flesh is going to stand before Yahweh. Only my soul. And my soul is a spirit that you cannot see. It will not require. I'm going to stand before the Father naked, and it will not require my soul that my head be wrapped up. And my Father, for the righteous work, because my work's going to follow me. Listen to me. Somebody's listening to hear this. My works, I'm not going to bust hell wide open because I was a woman. Why? Because in the spirit, in the spirit, there is neither male nor female. And when my soul stands before the Father on that great and terrible day, I will not be standing as a female or a woman. Standing as a spiritual soul, a being. So don't get caught up. Listen, don't get caught up in all that rigmarole roar. Don't get caught up in that. Don't let nobody hang you up in that. You make full proof of your ministry. That means when you expound on the word of Yahweh, that you make sure that the people, the ears can grow and mature and see the Father in what you do. Okay, now, so it says, but well, watch down all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So then Paul goes on. I ain't going to read no more. So what I'm doing with the book of Judges, remember I told you that the book of Judges, all right, because a lot of people want to say that what's being getting ready to be studied is not relevant to the day and age of where we at. Where are we living at in society today? That's the, that's the big excuse today, in today. But when Shaul, Paul, when Paul was talking, all right, to Timothy, written this letter to Timothy, the only knowledge of scripture he had was the Torah and the books of the prophets or the knowledge of the prophets. That's all he had. So he said all scripture is 